Jesus. Jesus. Wundiri mboza chu, ujiri chumugira. Umuziki du churanga, ujiri chufuga. Ujiri ujushimi mana umagambo ya. Mwami vikanza vijachu vila zamu yuno mugorova. Tugushiza heshu. Wala mama yesu, urahamba ye. Uri hejuru ya majuru. Uri hejuru yivijachu vjose na vachu vose. Uri hejuru mwami tuguhaichu wa hilo chose. Achiri chua hilo, achiri chua hilo yesu. Kugi mirimo yawe, kugi rukundor guawe. Kugi mbabazi zawe. Kugi shakar jawe, kugi zimabgachu. Kugi neza yawe, kugi zimabgachu. Achiri chua hilo yesu. Ibi ganza vila anga vila kusamu yi wengi jitambo chiu mugorova. Tugu shise hejuru chane mga. Hejuru imi gambi yachu. Hejuru imi jango yachu. Hejuru imi jatu kuifuza kujerao. Ahoni o tugu shise yesu. Uri hejuru ya biyose. Uwa wichua hilo ano ano. Uwa wichua hilo ano ano yesu. Indi mizose za ature kuru mgami. Uwa wichua hilo ano ano yesu. Ushizwe hejuru mgami. Ushizwe hejuru mgami. Ushizwe hejuru mgami. Ushizwe hejuru dati. Tugushize hejuru mgami. Hakuna mungu kama wewe. Akuna mungu kama wewe Akuna mungu kama wewe Ewe mungu wa Akuna mungu kama wewe Akuna mungu kama wewe Akuna Let's go. 
imana menetere imana vugana ni imana isawana nayo
Yawe turakuza muye Yawe turaguhimbaje Uri mani hambaye Uri mani kiraneza Uri mana yatutumiye kumeza Uri mana yaduhaye ubuntu bwo kwiramya no kwihimbaza Turakuza muye cyane birenze iby'amagambo yavuga birenze iby'indirimbo zavuga ushirwe heshuru ni wowe mwana ni wowe mwana ni wowe mana yukuri ni wowe mana tuzapfukamira ni wowe mana tuzahimbaza ni wowe mana tuzivuga ni wowe mana tuzirata urakoze kutugirira neza uyu mugoroba urakoze kutuzana imbere yawe urakoze kuduha materaniro yera urakoze kuduha materaniro uri mu mwana urakoze ko tudateranijwe n'ikindi uretse kumva mwana turagushimiye urakoze data nta ukindi twabona tugukorera mwami uretse kugukurira ubwatsi tugukomeye amashiko niwe mana Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that we can do it more than we did before. I know we are coming from different places. We don't get used to being Hallelujah. in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us not get used to being in the presence of God. This is not the same house at the house of God. This is the house of God. This is the house of God. And that is our mystery. We don't do what we cannot do for others. Hallelujah. We can do it better than we can do it for others. We can do it better than we can do it for others. behind if you don't mind please come uh, it's good to see all of us together so that when daddy says hug your neighbor you don't hug the worship child team yeah. let's uh, clap for worship Hallelujah. team let's appreciate that amen let them keep leading us into the spirit and Hallelujah. We welcome you all in the house of the Lord. Those who have been able to be here, we praise the Lord for you. Hallelujah. 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 I was telling you to not getting used to the things of God. Hallelujah is not a normal thing. If they say it again and again, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to welcome everyone. Because this is a special week. It's a uh, week for couples. But, but uh, there is a special thing in this house. You know we are all married. We are all married to Jesus. So let us welcome ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abageni ba Yesu, murabizi nyine nibindi bizagenda neza. Amen. You know, uh, Hallelujah. We are married to Jesus okay, and everything else will go well. Pardon. 
Reka turebe noneho niba hari itorero rya kabiri rigizwe nawe niwo mwashakanye. So let us see if we have the second church, the church made up of, uh, of uh, uh, husband and wife. Yes, ese hari abamaze gutera iyo ntambwe mu buryo bufatika noneho. Is there any people who are married uh, in a tangible way? Hallelujah. Let's clap for them. Alleluia. Are they there? Yes. Our fiance, our fiance to Abone. And those who are engaged, Vaz can we see them? Baba, <laughs> those who are engaged. Hallelujah. So let us receive those who have uh, got married spiritually. <laughs> Please stand up. Stand up, please. Hallelujah. This is not just uh, saying we are the, going to celebrate their marriages soon. Yes, we are to celebrate their marriages soon. Among people who have come to see that day, I was there. Daddy yaravuze ngo mu bantu barenze ngira ngo magana ne bari bamwicaye imbere ngo mwese ko muri hano nta muntu nzaba mu myaka ibiri ntarashyingira. Daddy said uh, among the 400 people who are sitting in front of him he said that in 2 years all of them will be married. Sasa harabi nkwakuzi dushobora kuba tugiye kubutahira mu meza atatu. So they are those who are very fast and then I think they are going to get married in three months. And there are others maybe who have come just to confirm with what daddy said, but who are going to get married in two years maybe. But what I know at the end of these seven years will be many, uh, we cannot even fit. Not only us, even our kids will be, uh, will be too many to Pero, fit in the Sunday school. Uh, so for those who have come uh, to, to learn, uh, to study what we are going to learn, you have really chosen well. Amen. So without taking too much time, let us uh, ask ushers to come and collect uh, offerings. And may the Lord uh, be uh, gracious to us so that we don't come in the house of God empty-handed. Yes. Yes. So I want to say everything and so that I can receive uh, welcome authorize. We have a very few announcements. As I said, it's a week of uh, married couples, uh, couples and we'll continue up to Sunday. And then our parents will welcome our guest to, of tonight. Tomorrow, Tomorrow we will uh, clean the church and uh, the surroundings of the church. Uh, Narada will work with a uh, uh, section of Kichukiro and Kiyovu. Ego. And again, tomorrow we have General Assembly. Changwa Assembly General. Uh, General Assembly. From 9 a.m. to 12. And those who have been the meet, uh, in the meeting are the leaders, uh, president, the vice president of uh, uh, home sales, uh, ministries, and uh, so on. Uh, and then another announcement is this coming Sunday, Mommy will 
uh, be with uh, people who are survivors, survivors of genocide, with their parents, Barea and Maren, after the second service. So let us uh, tell those who don't uh, know about this program. Ikindi nuko guhera mu kanya saine z'ijoro hari kwazad yabarangiza class 7 and another thing is uh, after this service from 10 pm there is a kwazad uh, for those who have uh, finished their seven classes ubwo rero ntihagira ubura kuko agashingura 10 gahora kari special so please don't miss because there is uh, going to be special moments. Yes. Ichindi nasha kuvuga. Another thing I want to say. Fitawa na watatu. Have three kids. Chimwe mo bina bo nye bivashi misha. One of the things that make them happy. Niyo papa na mama bari murugo. It's when daddy and mommy, their mom and daddy are at home. Abantu benshi bafite abana ngira ngo icyo kibazo mujya muhura nacyo iyo mugiye gusohoka I'm sure those who have kids most of you you know uh, whenever you want to go out you face that challenge Abana bakunda kuvuga ngo tu pars encore uh, kids say oh you going again Kandi hari gihe ubuhari And you know sometimes you are around umubyeyi, when you are a parent uri mu cyumba cyangwa uhugiye mu bindi you are in the room or you are doing some other endeavors. And kids are very happy because they know you, you, daddy and mommy are around. Whenever my kids tell me that I now understand it. I feel secure. I don't know about you but... As for me, whenever I see that and mommy, I feel secure. Even if they don't say anything, you feel secure because they are around. We thank God because he brought us uh, safely. I will not say much. Maybe they will tell us but I want you, uh, like my kids are very happy when I'm around. I want you to do the same. By welcoming our parents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, daddy. Let us uh, welcome Daddy. He will tell us something. And he will welcome our preacher of tonight. You know the way we do it. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing it well. If you feel you're done, please sit down. Good. Praise the Lord. As we always do, let's say a big amen. If you go, you do better, it's going to be a very one. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Again and again! Thank you very much. We thank God who brought us safely, as they said. But he also did great jobs where we went. You did well uh, clapping for him. We went to Goma on Sunday. 
the last Sunday we started the congress on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and we saw the hand of God we, were, we worshiped him we thank him so much on Thursday we went to Nairobi we have two churches uh, in Nairobi uh, zombi. and one of them we went to open it uh, op, uh, officially and uh, the, uh, its uh, pastor is um, Frank Mwamba uh, and it was amazing another church is uh, led by Professor Wangila all, all of them are really alive, you can, say. you can feel God moving in the churches. They have taken care of us and it all went well. We thank God who is uh, spreading us. And another thing is uh, in the Congress in Goma, we say that the next Congress is going to take place in Nairobi. In 2019, it's going to be the fifth Congress. And in the Congress in Goma, we had invited our brother, the pastor, the bishop, the doctor, uh, our friend, uh, Pastor Tum. He is not a guest or a visitor. Because even before 2015, he had come here. He came, uh, the, most of the time he came, he came in 40 days uh, when we were all down on the mat. Uh, even when he came, this time he came when we were in prayers. Uh, so you see that you have that connection of prayers. Arero, tujirwa nubundu yigisha muri congress abana twe muri congress aragaruka cyo mu rugishize yarari gikondo ndetse yakoze ruko kuri KBC iyi weekend turamufata rero kugira ngo tubere umugisha kandi muziko ari umugisha pe. And we were blessed to have him teaching in the congress and he came back he preached in a Gikondo, as well as BCC. So this week we have him and, and he's going to be a blessing for us. Uh, we have planned to come and visit you know, um, so we have uh, finished a very beautiful week of kids and we have started the week of couples. Uh, though uh, no uh, unmarried person in our midst, because you know we, you are all married to Jesus. We have a Even if there is anyone among you who are dreaming to be nuns, you can lift up your hands so that we... Pray you. Oh, fathers, uh, Carmelite, so that we pray for you so that you don't be a burden for us. Uh, so we went with mommy Hombi. in two places that I mentioned. Nairobi, na Goma. Nairobi and Goma. More especially that you remember she went to Nairobi before and this time I went accompanying her. Now we understand why she went to study. It was because of that work of the Lord. Uh, Pastor Charles, you are home. Pastor Charles Rimurugo. Open your heart as you can. 
Fungura umutima wawe nkuko ushaka. I know you are the man of word and the man of prayer and man of Holy Ghost. We are ready, we came to hear God through you. Today, tomorrow maybe in some special places or Sunday both services, but we want to hear. Microphone is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please be seated. Once again, it's a great honor to be back to ERC and particularly to Masoro. It's always a great honor to be back. And any time I come back, I see God doing amazing things. I see that you are growing in depths of God. And we give God thanks for what he's doing. You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen anything yet. God who honors prayer has heard your prayer. Sometime, let me say this, sometime in the month of February this year, February, yes, God showed me a vision whilst in prayer. And February is a time that I take off to pray for all partners and all people that have, have encountered in ministry. And I was praying for ERC. And God gave me a vision and in the vision there was worship going on. People were singing. Worshipping the Lord. And what I saw was that people were closing their shops and their houses in the city and they were all running to Masoro. Now so much was the presence of God as the worship was going on that people wouldn't even want to get in but on the compound they were lying on the floor, they were kneeling, hands Kuba. were lifted. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, In four years, in four years, in four years, you will extend your courts. You will extend your courts. You will extend your courts. I have it written and I'm reminding God every time. Hallelujah. So if you're in this house, I want you to continue growing in God, growing in knowledge, growing in the understanding of the things of God and in God's own time, he will do great works in your lives as well. I want to thank Papa and Mama for this opportunity, it's an honor. Back home, we honor you so much, we respect you so much. Our first son can't wait to be here with you. He said, and I've told you before, I have seen apostles, daddy, but this apostle is a different apostle. And uh, He has opportunity to go do his practicals everywhere. But he says he will come and do it in Kigali. 
And I know why he wants to come to Kigali. I know that he's pursuing an anointing. And he wants the anointing on Papa's life. And so when he comes, welcome him and just give him a seat right by Papa and let him sit there. And let him catch the anointing. Amen. Amen. I am to be talking to couples tonight. So we will try to just place some points and then on Sunday probably speak apostolically to people. I am married and I've been married for 22 years. And we have two boys, two sons. 21 and 17. And the journey of marriage for us in these 22 years has been exciting. It's been a journey and it's been exciting. Mama, whom you know was here with me last year, always says to me, you are my pastor and you have been my pastor for these 22 years. And I think that with 22 years experience, I have something to say. Shall we pray? Father, Data. we come before you tonight. We honor you for who you are. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Be God in our lives. Be God in our marriages. Be God in everything that concerns us. And perfect everything that concerns us. Be lifted high tonight. As we declare your counsel, let there be understanding. As you give clarity of speech, bless marriages. Bless our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 2, sorry. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I'll read from verse 18 to 25. Verses 18 to 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I'll make him a helper comfortable to him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Amen. Amen. Very interesting passage of scripture. The beginnings of beginnings. The beginning of marriage. It is important that God will let us know that he is the one that began this journey. And so the Bible says that and the Lord God said <laughs> It is not a man that said. 
It is not a woman that said. It is not an uncle that said. It is not an auntie that said. It is not a nephew that said. It is not a niece that said. It is not a child that said. But the Bible says, and the Lord God said. And for me, it's a very important statement. If the Lord God said something, whatever he said, and whatever it concerns, I must respect it. I must honor it. Because the word of God does not fail. It does not fail. The word of God always performs what it says it should perform. What we have just read regards how God intended marriage to be. And he, in the mind of God, he intended that marriage would be very glorious. Beautiful. Interesting. Exciting. Much as God intended that it would be glorious, He did not intend that we will wish that it will be glorious. He, he intended that we will work for it to be glorious. Write this down. A good Marriage does not come just by wishing. It's good to wish for it. It's good to expect it. That it will be good. But you must do something about it. The fact that you wish for a good marriage and you expect a good marriage does not mean that your marriage will be good. It's good to wish for it. It's good to expect it. But you must do something about it. God is not a lazy God. And if we are created in his image and likeness, then we are not a lazy people. It is the fall of man that brought laziness into man. But in the nature of God, in the creation of God, we were made to be responsible people, hardworking people. So if we will have a successful marriage, then it means we will have to work towards it. We will have to put in effort. But what is the effort? Every successful marriage will begin with the right choice. If the choice is wrong, the journey will be wrong. I will say that again. If the choice is wrong, the journey will be wrong. So what would be a good choice? What would be a good choice to have a successful marriage? Many points, but I will give you just one. Someone of like faith. Someone of like faith. Why do I say like faith? Someone who believes as you believe. Someone who walks towards the God that you are walking towards. Someone who believes in the God that you believe. You cannot be a Christian and decide to go and marry someone who is a Buddhist. You are married, but it's the wrong choice. And once the choice is wrong, the journey 
will be wrong. Don't deceive yourself. It will be wrong. But have someone of like faith. Someone who believes in the God that you believe in. Someone who serves the God that you serve. Someone who honors the God that you honor. Then you have a good choice. With that good choice, you can expect to have a good journey of marriage. Now let's quickly do this. Into the scripture that we read, God said it is not good for a man to be alone. He did, say, he did not say it is not good for a man to be lonely. Aloneness and loneliness are two different things. You can be alone and not lonely. You can be alone and not lonely. So when God said it is not good for a man to be alone, he was not saying the man was lonely. He was saying that he needed someone that the man could relate with. Man already was busy. <laughs> Adam was busy. God had given him the garden to take care of. God had given him animals to name. Every morning he will check out how they are doing. And so he was busy. He was not lonely. But what God intended was that he needed someone that Adam could relate with. So my first point is that a successful marriage must be based on the people relating to each other. Relationship is everything to God. Relationship means everything to us also. We were made to relate. We were created to relate. That's why even God, he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. What for? For relationship. What for? To be able to relate with God. In the same way when we are married, God wants us to relate with each other. Relationship simply means we are connecting soul to soul. We are relating and connecting soul to soul. In the days that we live in, Marriages are having challenges because of lack of relationship. We are married, but we are alone. Something that God cured from the beginning, we are now bringing it into the marriage. We are married, but we are alone. How, how are we alone? We are alone because of the pressures of life. We, we are alone because of technology. So these days there can be two people married in a room. But mobile phone has become their marital partner. <laughs> so you can see two people seated in a room. One person sitting here. Another person sitting here. What's happening very busily. Connecting to something that you cannot see. <laughs> Is that true? Is that true? So in my home, we say that we have our time. And we have me time. Our time means that 
it is not about me it is not about you it is not even about the person outside our time means that all of us our phones are somewhere television it must be something that we both are watching and commenting otherwise it must be off it is me and you because that is the sickness that God cured from the beginning. It is not good for man to be alone. And that's why he made him a woman to relate with. We can't have a successful marriage when our telephones are our wives and our husbands. You, you, it's okay, it makes life easier, it makes life comfortable. But we must have a conscious time, conscious moment, conscious, make conscious effort that this time of the day it is our time. And at that time that it is our time, the phone is on silent. Nobody is looking on his phone. Let's have fun. We will get to the telephone another time. You see, it is the strategy of the enemy to destroy and to separate us. When he, decide, when he is able to separate us, then he can have you to destroy you. So it's a strategy of the enemy. The more easier and comfortable life becomes, the more access the enemy gets into our lives. Walking with God is a price paying. Walking with God is a discipline. And as Christian couples, it is important that we have that discipline to be able to relate with, with our spouse. Very important. Because relationship was the first reason why God decided that he will not let Adam be alone. It is not If God wanted them to continue to be alone, he would have left them to be in their mother's house, in their father's house, and they will be connecting by telephone. <laughs> but the Bible says, for this reason, a man shall leave. <laughs> There's a reason for living. There's a reason for living. And the reason for living is that so I can relate to you and you can relate to me. There are many couples that are just cohabiting. We live under the same roof. It's like in the living in the Western world. When you live in the Western world, there can be two people living in a house. They share the rent. But they don't see each other. Or oh, if they see each other, by the time someone is coming, another is going. And so in couples, in married couples today, there are people who are cohabiting. God is not asking for cohabitation. He's just asking for relationship. In a very good relationship, Time is spent. We give our time so that we will spend time together. In a good relationship, communication is a key. In a good relationship, serving one another is a key. Okay, so if we say we are having a good relationship, it is not just a word, it's a life. <laughs> are we understanding this? If we say we have a good relationship, it is not just a word. Relationship is not just a word, it's a life. So what it means is that we are giving ourselves time and we are spending time together. It means we are communicating also. We are not giving 
anyone a silent treatment. Or we are not giving a monosyllabic answer. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Have you eaten? Yes. Have you shouted? No. Are you tired? No. Are you okay? Yes. So all the answers are monosyllabic. Yes, no, yes, no. Answer. But the reason for good relationship, a communication in good relationship is that we are giving details. So I ask a question and Mama will say no. Then I stand. It's just to say, is that all? I need more than this. I need details. Yes, no. It means nothing. And so you communicate, you make time to communicate. In communication, one of the things that can steal your communication is tiredness. I am tired. But if you cannot be refreshed in the home from getting tired at work, I don't know where else. You can be refreshed. Are you understanding this? You are tired from work. If you cannot be okay at home, I don't know where else. Apart from communication, we have also said that you are giving each other attention. If we relate very well, something will happen. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 30, one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. When we relate very well, we become victorious in every warfare. When we relate very well, we are able to attack every enemy together. So relationship, we must relate. If we are going to be a successful couple, we must relate with each other. Making time for each other. Giving each other attention. Communicating effectively. Avoid monosyllabic answers. Give details. Number two, respect. God said, I'm making for a man, I'm going to make for a man a helper suitable for him, not just any woman. Any woman is not the same as some woman. Any woman is not the same as some woman. So God did not decide that I'm going to make for Adam any woman. He says, I'm going to make for him someone who is suitable. If something connects suitably to you, you respect it. So God said, I'm making for you someone that you can respect and you can honor. A successful couple will be a couple that has respect for each other. Number one, they respect you because you are the creation of God. Number two, they respect you because you have come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, they respect you because you share your life with them. You cannot disrespect someone who is sharing his or her life with you. So I say to people, anytime you have an issue with your spouse, be careful what you say. Because if you are not careful, you will say something that shows disrespect. Respect is very necessary in a marriage. A couple that respects each other 
who speak kindly to each other and will honor each other and will submit to each other. And sometimes a man feels that he is not respected by the woman. And so he goes around, don't you know that the Bible says I am the head of the woman? Any man that says that, I say to that man, check your manhood status. Check whether you are functioning as a man. Because, mm. listen, because if you are playing your role as a man in the relationship, mm. any woman with her salt will willingly submit to you. And unless that woman is a rich, If that woman is not a rich and you are being a man you are functioning as a man being the head of the union having a vision knowing that you are driving the family to a very good place that woman will respect you. There are men who marry and they don't have a vision and they, because they don't have a vision, they are not playing any role that a man is supposed to play. Naturally, every woman wants to be taken somewhere, driven somewhere. Every woman, every woman wants to be taken somewhere. Every woman knows that having left my father and mother and joined myself to you, in the next few years, my life should be better than it used to be when I was in my father's house. But if they check your life and they realize that you don't have a vision, you are not driving them anywhere, in their minds, my father was better than you. At least my father took me to school. So when a man is not functioning as a man and playing a role and, and a man being a man is not just having a stick in front of you. Being a man is having brains. And having a vision and knowing where you are taking the family. When it happens like that the wife will willingly submit to you. And you don't have to be saying don't you know I am the man, I am the head. When a man says that to you Mrs. wife say hello because he's not supposed to say it. Respect is another thing. Number three, reason. 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 Think together. I'm only using the letter R's so that it will follow. So I've talked about relate. I've talked about respect. I'm talking about reason. Let me explain. Maybe you understand. Okay. I will make him a helper, meet for him. What God was saying was that I'm giving you somebody that you will not lord over, but somebody who can reason with you. A successful couple will be the couple that reasons together. A successful couple will be the couple that is saying that, honey, I don't have it all. I know that you are also God's creature. You are also blessed by God. You also have wisdom. You also have ideas. That's why God gave you to me. And so please, how about this? What do you think about this? In some marriages and in some relationships, it is like a boss and a servant relationship. Uh -huh. So, so the woman is not allowed to share on anything. But understand this. She's a child of God. She reads the word of God. She prays. God talks to her also. 
So give her the opportunity to bring her mind also into situations and into issues. It helps. It removes some of the stress on you. You will never know that a woman has powerful ideas until you allow her and give, give her the chance to begin to share also. I don't know about here, but in aspects of our culture in Ghana, Ghana says that a man is a man. A woman has nothing to offer. It takes the word of God to change such a mindset. And so in such cultures, women are not allowed to say anything. All they do is to cook and serve the table. And in the night, warm the bed also. All other things, they don't have brains. But a successful couple will be the couple that reasons together. If Adam could live his life alone, God would not have brought him a companion. If Adam had ideas to Turn the garden and to take care of all that God has given to him alone, God wouldn't have given him. The fact, that, the fact that God brought him along suggests to Adam that Adam allow him to also bring her ideas. So, Mr., your life will be better if you give Mrs. or Madam the chance to also speak into issues and into situations. In life, you don't have it all. And sometimes, instead of asking our partners, our wives, what they think about this situation, we ask our friends. Maybe sometimes your friend has not gotten to the point that you have gotten to and probably jealous. So we'll not speak rightly into the situation. But your spouse cares about you. Your spouse believes in you. Your spouse wish for a better future for you. So when that spouse is allowed to bring her idea or his idea, he or she will say a better thing that will help you. So let's allow them. Number four, romance. A successful couple will have romance in the marriage. Romance is not sex. But romance can lead to sex. There are some people, especially men, the moment they hear romance, their body begins to do shh. You can have romance in the marriage and it's not sex. Romance simply means that speaking the language of each other being sensitive to the need of the person and at the right time also. Everybody has a love language. Everybody has a love language. I know a couple the guy buys things he likes to buy because he's, he's a sanguine. He's a sanguine. Sanguine as a temperament, they, they buy, they just buy. They buy. And everywhere they go, they buy. They buy chocolate, they buy shoe, they buy coffee, they buy chicken. To bring to the spouse. But the spouse is a melancholic. Melancholic's interest is not in things. Melancholic interest is in the person. So the guy complains to me, I buy everything for her. I buy everything for her. I buy everything. She's still not happy. I buy everything for her. 
As a melancholic person, she doesn't need things, she needs you. So where are you? Ask somebody where are you? Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> and it was a big issue for him that everything the wife is looking for, he buys for her. But then the wife still is not happy. And when we start to talk, we realize that you are speaking the wrong language. You are speaking, but you are speaking the wrong language. Mama back at home doesn't need anything. Mama He doesn't need anything. He needs me. That's a language. He needs a person. So wherever I am in the world, it's important to her that I connect. And when I am home, it's important to her that I am connecting to her and to her alone. I can be buying things and it will mean nothing to her. A successful couple is the couple that has romance in the marriage by understanding the love language of each other. The love language of each other. There are some people whose long, love language is to hear. So for such people, they want you to be talking to them and be saying, honey, tomato, as daddy will say. My chili pepper. <laughs> My African tea. <laughs> My sweetie, sweetie. Sweetie. My honey, honey. Honey. That is their love language, and the more you speak that love language, they love you, and they respond to that love language. There are people whose love language is touching and holding. They want to hold your hand in the public. They want to put their hands around you in public. They want to put their heads on your lap. They want to put your head in your bosom. You are standing at the shop buying and he's holding you and he's holding you stop, we are in public, we are in public. But that is their love language. They want to touch. But African men, they don't like that. African men don't. So in the shop, because he knows that the woman will touch him, he's walking at the other side. But if you meet a woman whose love language is touching, don't be scared that he's holding you in public. Don't be scared. Sometimes I've preached in churches in US and in Europe and I'm preaching. I didn't know this until I learned this. And when I'm preaching, I saw people sitting in front and the woman's head is on the man. I said, we are in church, man. We are in church. We are in church. And I'm preaching and I'm saying to you, can't we wait? Can't you wait till we close and you go and do this? Can't you wait? Until I came to understand that it's a love language. <laughs> Maybe the message I'm preaching is going very well by putting the head on the man and going. Maybe that's the way she's hearing the message very, very well. And then there are those whose love language is gifts. And so when you come and they ask you, didn't you bring me anything? Did you bring me anything? So when you come and they ask you, didn't you bring me anything? Now when we talk about romance, all we are saying is that you understand these love languages and you are playing these love languages in your relationship. That is a successful Marriage. Don't be like a footballer who has an empty post 
And we just hit the ball and it's over the bar. Sometimes some over the bar can be pardoned. It can be pardoned. Because the ball just goes just on top of the stick. But when the over the bar is over and over, it cannot be pardoned. And if you are not speaking the right love language, you are just playing over the bar, over Amen. and over. Amen. So romance is very important in a relationship. Don't be too stiff. Don't be like a stick. When you are touched, lose a little. Be flexible. Sometimes some women are also very stiff. Your man comes home and hits you a little at the bar. Say, what? What? But there must be that flexibility if we are going to be a successful couple. Number five. And probably I end with this. Rule. Rule. R U L E. R U L E. Rule. Marriage is an institution. As an institution, there must be order. As an institution, there must be structure. Especially if it's as a human institution, there can never be an institution that no one is ruling. In every institution, there must be order. And to bring order somebody must be in charge. God in his wisdom has given that rulership to the man. God in his wisdom has given that grace to the man. Anything God gives and God does comes with grace. Anything God has not given you means that you don't have grace for it. If God has given the man that chance to be the ruler of the family, of the union, of the marriage, it means that the man has grace for it. And the man must play his role as a ruler. Rulership is not a name, it's a function. So as a ruler, what is your role? You play the role of a priest. You play the role of a priest. A priest's role takes people to God and brings God to people. That is the major role of a priest. To take people to God and to bring God to people. And so as the ruler of the union, your major role is to be a priest in the family. Introduce your family to God. Help them to grow in Christ. Help them to know God. Help them to mature in the things of God. That is your first role as a ruler. So if you are telling me as a husband that I am the head of the union, show me how much you have introduced God to your family. Show me how much you are teaching them how to pray. Show me how much you are teaching them the word of God. Show me how much you are bringing God to them by teaching them the ways of God. Then I will tell you that indeed you are a ruler of the family. So know God so that you can teach your wife and your children who God is. This is headship. This is headship. 
This is rulership in the marriage. A successful marriage will be the marriage that has someone who is ruling and the person ruling must bring God into the union. Teach prayer. Teach giving. Teach love. Teach obedience. Teach generosity. Teach evangelism to your family. This is what rulership means. This is what headship means. My first son, by the time he turned 12, had read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation six times. By the time he turned 12, he had read it six times. And not because I used Cain or I forced him to, but I made sure I had developed interest for the Bible in his heart. So he himself had to chase the Bible. That is headship. That is rulership. You can be the head of the marriage when you yourself is not pursuing God. Ruth said to Naomi, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Who would your wife say her God will be? If you yourself is not pursuing God the way you have to pursue God. Who would your children say their God will be if they don't see you pursuing God? the way you have to pursue God. A successful marriage will be the marriage that the head of the union is teaching the people God. And introducing them to God. So that they will come to the point in their lives where they will say, we know God. We are understanding God. Your first role as a head is the priest of the home. Your second role is to be the provider. We love ourselves. Some people will say, but we will eat. We love ourselves, but we need shelter over our heads. We love ourselves. But we need certain basic provisions. So a true ruler, a true head is the one that works hard to provide for the family. Before God gave Eve to Adam, he made sure Adam was working. You can be a lazy husband. You can be sleeping whilst your wife is working. That's not the mind of God. So as a husband work. I say to my wife. Anytime you bring money to do something. To support in anything, I am grateful. I thank you. It is not your role, but you have decided to do it. And I don't take it for granted. I'm supposed to be doing it. But if you do it, I don't take it for granted. In some couples, in, in, in some marriages, the rule is 50-50. The children's school fees, we share 50-50. We are going to rent a house, 50-50. We are going to buy food for the house, we are sharing 50-50. What kind of life is that? I mean, a woman will support, a woman will genuinely support but it is not her place. As a man, a husband, your role, your rulership is to provide. That's why you have to work hard. And anytime your wife decides to give something, 
kandi giye cyose umufasha wawe yemeje kugira icyo atanga hold her hands uyu mufata mu kiganza give her a kiss umusome and say thank you umushimire i am grateful tindagushimiye cyane don't take it for granted nako mbifashe ngibisanzwe very important nibyo ingenzi cyane don't take it for granted the fact that you are working as a wife does not mean that I must decide that everything you get, bring it to me. No. If you bring it, praise God. But God gave me the responsibility to be the provider. If a man is sitting somewhere around you, just hold the man's hand, squeeze it gently. Squeeze it gently. If a man is sitting around somewhere, just hold it, squeeze it gently. Gently, squeeze it gently. Look at the person and say, you are a provider. Don't be lazy. Work hard. God bless you. <laughs> the third thing that a ruler is supposed to do is to be able to cast the vision so that as a family, as a couple, we are all going towards the same direction. Whatever plan, whatever idea, whatever dream you have, whatever goal you have, ensure that you are sharing it. One of the ways that conflict comes into marriage is when we both have different visions and this one is going this direction, another one is going towards that direction and it's because we are not sharing. The Bible says what is your plan for the next two years? What is your plan for the next five years? What is your plan for the next ten, ten years? Short term plan, mid term vision, long term vision, share it so that all of us will go to the same direction. It is very important. Because if you all decide to go different directions, it will not be good for us. So as a priest, as a head, you are a priest, you are a provider, and you are a caster of visions. You cast visions. You tell the family where we want to be where we want to go, what we want to do, so that their prayers, their support, will come into it. Lastly, I say, resist all forces of darkness. There is an enemy to a successful marriage. And the enemy is not your father-in-law. The enemy to your marriage is not your mother-in-law. The enemy is the devil. He will always be the enemy. The Bible says that our warfare is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. So when something is going wrong in the marriage, don't fight your spouse. Detect which door has been opened to the devil and close that door. The Bible says resist the enemy and he will flee. So marriages are and the attacks because there is an enemy who wants to destroy marriages. There is an enemy who wants to destroy the reputation of people. And we are supposed to resist the enemy. Fight the enemy. Together declare that the enemy will not have an opening into your marriage. By thoughts, by hearing, by seeing, and by saying. These are the doorways that the enemy can come into the marriage. What you think about, what you hear, what your eyes see, what your mouth declares. It can always be an, a doorway to the enemy. But know that 
every marriage, every successful marriage has an enemy. Whether you invite him or not, there's an enemy. And you must resist that enemy. Through prayer and fasting. Through knowledge of the word of God. Because if you pray and fast and you don't have knowledge also, then you don't know what to apply. So have knowledge of God's word regarding relationship and regarding marriage. And apply that marriage. God said I must love my wife apply that knowledge God said I must give my life to my wife as Christ gave himself to the church apply that knowledge God said submit one to another apply that knowledge God says, deal kindly with one another. Apply that knowledge. God says, speak peaceably with one another. Apply that knowledge. God says, forgive one another. Apply that knowledge. So you resist the enemy by prayer and fasting. You resist the enemy by knowledge also. And number three, you resist the enemy by holy work. Consecration. This is a work that the enemy can never walk. He can never be holy. He can never be righteous. Even if he tries to. But you and I, God has given us the grace to be consecrated and to be righteous before him. And the moment we begin to walk that walk, it closes the door to every enemy. Because the Bible says, no evil will come near your dwelling place. So couples can resist the enemy by their holy walk. That's why all of us are supposed to be dedicated to God. Consecrated to God. Yielded to God. Submitted to God. So that it becomes a barrier to the enemy. I pray that the power of resistance will come upon you. I pray that the grace to resist forces of darkness will come upon your marriage. I pray that you will stand to make a declaration against every entrance of the enemy. I pray that the declarations of your mouth will become an arrow that pierces every enemy that seeks to destroy your marriage. I pray that your resistance will release the grace of God to surround your marriage. And I pray that the blessing of God will come upon your marriage. Let no enemy, let no force, let no principality, let no power place its eyes upon upon your marriage. Let every pursuit of enemies of marriages withdraw their pursuit from your marriage. May God lift up his hand upon your marriage. And may the hand of God becomes a weapon that fights every enemy of marriages. In this century where marriages are breaking, I declare that as for you, your marriage will last until the trumpet will sound, until Jesus will come. As people are getting discouraged in marriages, I pray and I declare that as for you, may your marriage become a great example unto many people. May love descend strongly and sweetly into your marriage. May the sharing of love in your marriage become an acceptable thing May it be said that as for everyone marrying in ERC, their marriage is good, their marriage is strong, their marriage is sweet, their marriage is beautiful, their marriage is honorable, their marriage is majestic, their marriage is... Un oh my God, I pray in the name of Jesus that every marriage in this house be guarded by the Lord himself. May every marriage in this church be surrounded by angels of God. 
Let no agenda to destroy and to frustrate marriages be realized and let it not be fulfilled. They may gather to come against your marriage, but I declare that because it is not of the Lord, may their gathering be scattered by God. I pray that grace from above will become your portion. And in loving one another, the grace of God will fall. I pray whatever is lacking in marriages in this house, God will supernaturally supply spiritually and emotionally and physically and materially anything lacking in any marriage may Jehovah supernaturally supply may God supernaturally supply may God supernaturally supply yes may God supernaturally supply let there be no gap in any marriage let God himself Feel any gap in any marriage. I declare tonight, let the power of God break forth and break loose upon marriages in this house. Let there be an anointing that rises upon people that in their marriage, the anointing of God will begin to flow and will begin to fall. May the blessing of the Lord that comes into marriage be released into marriages. May the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and hath no sorrow be released into marriages in this house. I declare day by day let marriages grow into the nature of Christ. Let marriages grow into the stature of Christ. And now I declare according to the word of the Lord he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. I release marital favors. I release marital favors. Favor that comes because of marriage. I release marital favors. In any place where the enemy has stolen from marriages. I declare a restoration. 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 And I declare may no shortcomings on your mother's bloodline. On your mother's bloodline. That fights marriages. Let those powers not fight you. I declare on your father's bloodline any power that fights marriages in your family line. Let the power not pursue you. Let God be a barrier. Let God be a boundary. Let God be a wall between you and the powers of the family that fights marriages. May God lift marriages up. May God glorify marriages. May God honor marriages. May God bless marriages. I declare in the name of Jesus let a new wine let a new wine let a new wine let a new wine be poured into marriages let sickness come. Now above all Lord I ask you that you will give husbands and wives tender hearts and as they love you they will love each other also I declare this in the name that is above every name Jesus Christ our Lord Amen, Amen. Let us receive the blessings of our mother and father. Let us hold each other on our shoulders. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, for our blessing of getting married. 
umurage wo kubaka neza umurage wo kubaka neza umurage wo gushaka neza umurage wo gushinga ingo n'imiryango myiza imirage ugaragaza imana mu rugo mu shaka umuryango tangaza kuri umwana mu rugo kandi umurage wa ugo bagaragara kalamba frasha kata kata umwana mu rugo ayakira umurage nta urwanirira ashaka neza yubaka neza ategurwa neza ni muri musovye munategurwa neza ubukobwa ategurwe neza katikitikiri bakatikitiri mo kataka shatikitiki bakatikitiri mo aya kataka shakata rakataka shakata rakashaka takata yesu 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 Ai gitare ai gihome ai rushakorwa ai gukomera kwacu ai kubaka kwacu ai fitsa yacu ai tsinzi yacu ai ibanire yacu ai tera mere yacu ai rushakorwa cyo rwiza ai gitare ai gihome ai buhungiro ai mabazi ai kunesha kataka tikita Shaka tiki 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 baka tiki 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 baka taka tiki ti ea ba shaka raka tiki tiri kataka shake tiki ti ea ba shaka taranga taka ea taka taka ea taka taka ea taka shaka tiri tiki 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 ti ea ba 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 Lenga ba ya shakati, aya katiri kata kashakati alaka tege te. Yoma ne ra chuma ka ira cha hindura, ira tega ni ra tegura ira shlama flangla shakla ma shakati. E ama shakla kriba kashuki tiki 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 waga, kati tiki 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 tiri kati tiki 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 bakati ni. Ada kashuki tiki tiri mo gutu gutu ku bakati tiki tiri bakati tiki tiri mo kote ni mo. Aya kati tiki 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 Ko bi miyambi yose, ko bi tero yose. Iti zia yeye suni gara gare. 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 Iti zia suni gara gare. Ni gara gare. Ni gara gare. Ni gara gare. Ni gara gare. Iti zia yeye suni 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 gara gare. Iti zia Oshi abaka fatra kashakata, iti nzia Yesu ni gara gare, iti nzia Yesu ni gara gare, iti nzia yuma mini gara gare, murugurwa, chumirja kurwa, chumirja moya, chumiri gara gare, uma ni aratsi nze. Ma mina gushimiye. Thank you Jesus. Gushimiye kujize neza kaya kafatra kashakata, raka shakati kitiri kata kashakati. Kaya ngala brava fraka shaka tiri ya katiki ti. Aya kashikiri wo ngala ma fraka shata katiki ti. Tiki tiki tiri kiti 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 kiti. Shiki tiki 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 tiki. Shaka talang robo kutu kutu kuba katiki tiki baka tiki 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 baka tiki 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 tiki. Tiki tiki baka tiki tiri tiki 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 baka tiki tiri tiki 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 baka taka tiki 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 baka tiki tiri tiki 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 tiri tiki 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 baka tiki 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 tiri 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 tiki 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 tiri tiki 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 tiri tiki 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 tiri tiki 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 tiri tiki Shakati, 